Now, so I mentioned screens before. Screens are screens. They're meant to capture the wider universe of patients. They may not necessarily rule out false positives. You know, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, but it's really a goose. A screen is meant to catch everybody. When we do screening with mammography or screening, screening with um, um, pap smears, we don't want to miss a diagnosis. So we'll take some false positives because we don't want to get false negatives. So that's what screens do, which is a good thing, right? They're, if anything, they're over-inclusive. Um, this slide describes some of the data that have come from what, what arguably is the gold standard screen, the mood disorders questionnaire. It's a 13-item self-report scale. Doesn't ask about current symptoms, asks about lifetime, really the DSM features of mania or hypomania. You score more than seven on this rating scale. You have casehood. Now that doesn't mean, oh, you're bipolar. It means fairly high risk for the diagnosis of bipolar disorder. It's like, like a positive pap smear. It doesn't mean you have cervical cancer, but it means we have to undergo more, more thorough evaluation. So, um, the, the sensitivity and specificity and positive predictive value, negative predictive value, all these statistics tell us things about how likely is the scale to be useful. I want to call it a couple of points. First, NPV, negative predictive value. That means if you score below threshold, don't waste your time. Very low probability that this is bipolar disorder. MDK has a pretty good negative predictive value. So in our busy clinical lives, if a patient fills out an MDQ or similar rating scale at the get-go and they score below threshold, but 88.9% chance this is not bipolar disorder. So move on to other things. Second, the MDQ tends to have a better sensitivity for bipolar one disorder than bipolar two disorder. Bipolar two is it's harder to diagnose. It's harder even for experts to get agreement on the diagnostics. And then lastly, table three on this uh, slide shows that it depends who you're screening. So in a general population versus psychiatric outpatients versus mood disorder patients, there's there's variability. The, the negative predictive value seems to be pretty high across the boards, but the positive predictive value may, may vary. So say in psychiatric outpatients, the positive predictive value drops down to like 38%. That means that if the patient has, well, maybe some of the comorbidities we were talking about before, that may obscure the diagnosis. So what does this mean? It means a screen is a starting point. It's not an endpoint. Right? Here's another way to think about diagnosis, something that's been called the, the bipolarity index. This was devised by some researchers looking at let's call them corroborating features of the diagnosis. So besides symptoms, you know, how do you make a diagnosis in psychiatry? Cross-sectional symptoms, longitudinal course over time, someone that had a psychotic episode 30 years ago and has been fine since, their longitudinal course does not suggest schizophrenia. You'd, you'd expect more episodes. Someone who had a manic episode once, 100,000 years ago and nothing since makes you scratch your head too. You'd expect a certain course over time. So of course, over time, family history, age at onset. Remember, this is a disease of, well, not the very young. It's pretty rare to have this ailment occur before puberty. Depression can occur before puberty, but mania is less common. Late adolescence, young adulthood is about the time frame. Someone who shows up at age 60 with their first mania doesn't neatly fit. And response to treatment. Uh, not diagnostic, no clincher here. If you got better with lithium, that doesn't mean, ah, oh, it must be bipolar disorder any more than if you say, my headache got better with acetaminophen, it must have not been a migraine. It's consistent with it not being a migraine, but treatment response is just a corroborator. So you can add up all these points as shown here about episode characteristics and family history, et cetera. And if you score above a certain threshold, it's a corroborator. So I, I like the concept here. Again, it's not a proxy for diagnosis. It's a corroborator.